You're watching Reality Check. Tonight, inspired by a piece on the online portal The Wire, we focus our attention on a neglected aspect of this election, the power of money, specifically how the ruling party is richer and spends more than its competitors by many miles. Which raises the question, when we talk of a wave, how much of it is organic and how much is the power of propaganda, paid propaganda? Number two, for a party that has made much of cleaning up corruption, how clean are its own funds? But first, Ryder, political finance is a grey area. We only know how much parties make and spend based on their own declarations. There is no independent audit of these declarations. Moreover, these disclosures do not factor in off the books, unaccounted wealth, which anecdotally, as we know, can be much, much higher than what is disclosed. That said, here is what the declared numbers, much of it sourced from the excellent ADR or Association of Democratic Reforms, tells us. Since the BJP has come to power, its income has skyrocketed from 300 crores in 2013 to about 1,000 crores in 2018. Just look at how that graph has climbed. The Congress, on the other hand, has dipped from 600 crores to 200 crores. So the BJP has crores of cash in its bank account. But where is it coming from? Now, almost 50%, about 500 crores, is coming from what are called unknown sources. These are cash contributions less than 20,000 rupees, electoral bonds which are opaque, sale of coupons, and so on. So that's a big amount, which is quote-unquote unknown. With the Congress, the unknown sources account for 120 crores, or about 60% of all money earned. Now, we're just putting up on screen for you the classification, the categorization of what is known as known and what is known as unknown sources. You can get more details from the ADR site. Now, as an aside, if we just zero in on the electoral bonds, which are the new and controversial source of opaque fundraising, the BJP is the king of electoral bonds by miles. Of the total of 215 crores of bonds purchased last year, the BJP earned almost all 210 crores. Just 5 crores went to the Congress. So how does the BJP spend all its money? How does the National Party spend their money? The BJP's biggest expense, 75% of all its funds, goes into propaganda. The BJP's own filings show. The rest is administrative costs, employee costs, etc. etc. This is for the last filings in 2017-18. The Congress doesn't have a separate propaganda section, but it shows it spends about 29 crores in election expenses and 23 crores in something called finance costs, which we couldn't figure out what that means. So going into this election, the BJP has had a huge advantage over its rivals. Except, new information shows that the Congress may be catching up in spending, or at least in state elections, where it feels it has a better chance of winning. Data crunched by the Hindustan Times shows that from all state elections since 2014 till the ones in November last year, the Congress spent only a third of what the BJP spent, 430 crores to the BJP's approximate 1,200 crores. But in the November Assembly elections in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh and so on, the Congress almost drew level with the BJP, spending about 200 crores to the BJP's 200 and 30 crores. So where the Congress felt it had a chance of doing better, it upped its spending and perhaps the BJP sensing defeat or sensing they may not do well, perhaps they dial down the fencing as well, the funding as well. So roughly drawing level in December of last year. All right, joining us tonight on the panel, we have uh, Shama Mohammad, spokesperson of the Congress party. We have Lalita Kumaramangalam, director of India Foundation, member of the BJP. And Milan Vaishnav, who's a senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment and uh, <coughs> also has authored a book on political finance. Milan, great to have you. Uh, just to ask you now, so just looking at these numbers, so there is, uh, you know, a big gap between the BJP and its rivals. But some of those concerns that you and several others have raised, that political funding despite all these claims of cleaning up black money, continue to be opaque. And we see that a very large chunk of the money continues to come from unknown sources. There's no question about that. I mean, I think the fundamental reality is that after demonetization and after the introduction of schemes like electoral bonds, which were advertised under the banner of improving transparency, 
Hmm. Uh, there have has been no material improvement in the transparency of election funding. In fact, I would argue precisely the opposite. We're now seeing a greater legitimization of the opacity of political funding, and that's across the board, whether you're talking about money going to the Congress, to the BJP, or to regional players. Right. So in some ways, you're saying that the opacity has gotten worse, but also, uh, Milan, in terms of the implications, when you have one political party that is wealthier by miles compared to the others, what does that do to the actual democratic process? Well, I think for the first time in a long time, perhaps ever, we're seeing such a wide gulf between one party and the principal opposition uh, in terms of fundraising and in terms of expenditure. So I think what it does is obviously it, it creates uh, a level, pl a, a playing field that's not level, that's imbalanced. Um, but I think, you know, what we saw in the recent state elections in December, particularly in the Hindi Belt, you showed the numbers, is that corporates and other individuals also know how to hedge their bets, right? So in some sense, they're following their own political instincts to see who looks like uh, they're going to uh, emerge victorious in 2019. Right. Uh, it's very, very hard for corporate donors to be caught on the wrong side of political power because we know that the state has so many levels of regulation, of licenses, of clearances that they can use right. as a way to punish firms who don't support them uh, in terms of money. Right. No, so that you're right. So, I mean, that could explain one of the reasons why we're seeing the Congress sort of catching up in the spending in those December elections. But Lalita Kumaramangalam, just to ask you, I mean, this point about, you know, the BJP making so much of the fact that it's trying to clean up corruption, it's trying to clean up black money, but your own numbers show that almost 50% of your funds have come from unknown sources. Vasu, uh, while everybody is busy ho uh, hauling the BJP over the coals, I'm not going to waste my time trying to defend them. What I would like to flag on today's uh, show is the money that is not declared by parties Mm. Uh, during elections, especially since I come from down south, and so do you, Vasu. So you know how elections take place in Tamil Nadu. Mm. We really don't know how much each voter is being paid, where that money comes from, etc. But I have to give credit to the Election Commission that especially in this election, mm. they have put the fear of God into individual politicians who may be spending money like water in order to move have votes, they? regardless of what party they may come from. I'm not getting into the, the politics of this because then the issues will go for a toss. No, but now, let us, uh, hold on. Uh, with I... regard to the amount that the BJP is spending, the gentleman before me... Yes. Yeah, sure, sure. You wanted to say interrupt. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. I, I, just want to say, I just want to say that, um, you know, to be honest, A, I don't see any great evidence of the fact that there was any huge curb on uh, illicit money spending in this election. I mean, I traveled in Andhra and in Telangana and everything suggested that people were spending crores and crores of rupees. And number two, I mean, again, you say don't make it political, but when the government or the government agencies only raid opposition leaders and rival chief ministers and rival parties for quote-unquote, unaccounted wealth, black money, then yes, it does become political, does it not? No, I, I think in Tamil Nadu, the ADMK was also raided. No. But, I mean, let's move ADMK away was, from just Tamil Nadu. It was BMK, it uh, was BMK, the, There is a lot of truth in the fact Nath, that was, politics and money seem to be interlinked. Hmm. And, uh, but, but to give credit to the BJP, they have openly declared which means that, I mean, people who want to contribute certain amounts to the BJP and are, well, under the law, if they do not need to declare themselves, well, that's up to the law to be changed. As for the BJP, we have been very open about how much is being spent. Remember that the electoral law also says that there is no limit to party spending. No, no, no. No individuals on. have that 75 lakh cap, separate... which I agree with you is rarely adhered to. No, that's there a separate point, There are many ways of getting around it, and we all know, and every no, party is doing that. That's a separate, that's now, a separate point. The, po the point is not that which party is spending how much. No, 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 no. But no. the point it's, it's... is why do elections uh, mean so much money needs no, to be spent? No, that's a separate... Okay, the, we, the, the, those are all separate points. I think the key thing is source of funds. If you continue to accept 
almost 50% of your money, that's almost 500 crores, from unaccounted sources, then that's a problem. Because that suggests that you are no different from other I, parties. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Vasu. Okay. I hope I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part of your question, Vasu. Let me try to get that line fixed for you. Let me try to get that line fixed for you because I do want you to hear this question. But let me take that question to Trilochin yeah. Shastri. Yeah. Shama, I'll come to you in a second. Trilochin sure. Shastri, uh, you know, the point that is being made here is that, okay. again, this is all thanks so much to ADR, that national parties, all parties, are continuing to take a lot of money in from unaccounted sources. And this is a problem. How you spend it is another matter. Absolutely. It's a but huge where it's problem. coming from. The people of India need. Yeah. Yes, we need to know uh, the accounts of all the political parties and who is funding whom so that voters can make a much better choice. And this choice is available to voters around the world. I don't mm. know why Indian voters are being denied this information. So it's very unfortunate. And for a healthy democracy, we need voters to know who is funding whom in full 100% transparency. Right. And the electoral bonds certainly don't uh, allow that. It's a very unfortunate situation we are in right now. Right. You know, Shama, uh, the fact is that you're not earning much money, the Congress, but that doesn't necessarily make you more virtuous. It's just because you're out of power. But mm -hmm. when it comes to the ratio of undeclared or tra non-transparent funds, your, your ratio is high, if not higher than the BJP. You're taking in, say, you know, 60% of your cash is coming in from unknown sources, 120 crores. Okay, a couple of points, uh, Vasu. <laughs> We are a party which is 130 years, more than that old. You know, 1885, I think we were started. Yes. And here's a party who is maybe started 1980. They have a building. They have their own uh, office, which is which was made with more than 1,000 crores. We don't know where the funds come from. We are still in a rented, 24-hour uh, borough is rented. Okay, but that's uh, it. Wait, that let, aside, let me, that let me aside. Say, yeah, yeah. Let me, now point number two is this electoral bonds. You know, these no, electoral coming, bonds. Coming to the bonds, it just a second. No, just don't know. I, I, the bonds are opaque. That's, yeah. uh, and no, one, no one disputes that. But why does the Congress continue to receive mm -hmm. a huge chunk of its money mm -hmm. from unknown sources? See, Sale of coupons, membership fees. We all know so, what so these are. These are euphemisms for, you know, you funds see, from dubious sources. So we did not introduce the electoral bonds. In our, in our uh, manifesto, we've clearly said that we want these electoral bonds to go. We want transparency. But I'm not asking it's very about clear. bonds. I'm not and, asking about and bonds. And one very important hmm. thing I want to say, she, uh, I think Mrs. Kumara Mangalam spoke about the election commission being very transparent this time. Hmm. Now, let's not forget Pema Khandu, the Arunachal Pradesh CM. Yes. This convoy was caught on the night before PM's rally in Pasigat. And 1.8 crores was caught with the Welcome easy observer. Easy, easy ob observer was yeah. there. Now, what has happened to that? Nothing. We don't know what happened. Eight crores from Telangana, again from a BJP worker. Then after that, there's a black color box coming out of Prime, uh, uh, Prime Minister's helicopter okay, but in that, Karnataka. No, 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 we but don't know what happened. But no, the but most we, we can't get into that black but, box but because let's, that is let's, a different issue. One important thing is the proof the BJP has a lot of money is the assembly elections in Karnataka. We have on tape Mr. Yadurappa telling the JDS minister's son, MLA son, that you know what? I have this amount of money. We, we will okay. be giving each MLA this amount. So where did they get the 200 okay, crores, 18 ask, MLAs? We'll where where get, did we get that money? Okay, we'll get to, and, we'll get to that. We'll and get to, and also, like, one important point. No, no, you're asking too many points. We must go point by no, point. Let me go to Su Lalita Kumar Supa, Mangal, if Su I can go across to her. Supreme Court and the Supreme let Court. Let me just... Let, Let me, me just, just go to her. No, no, no. Point, too many no, points. Too so many points. No, no. Too many points. We can't. No, they, no, no. It's not fair to have so many points. I'll go to her in a second. But before that, Milan, I do want to ask you that there is still all this confusion about where the money comes from. Now, you uh, made an interesting point. You made an interesting point, uh, which was to do with you looked at real estate because real estate construction industry is supposed to be one big source of funding for political parties. And you actually found that cement sales go down before elections, suggesting a lot of that money is getting um, rooted into elections. Yeah, so we know that uh, firms in the building and real estate industry, the construction industry more generally, are the, some of the principal, principal financiers of elections. Now, how do you actually capture that? So. Uh, what Devesh Kapoor and I did in a recent study was we look at cement consumption 
uh, by month, by state. Uh, and what you see is very interesting that the cement consumption is a proxy for building activity. Unfortunately, in India, we don't have great data on building activity. And you see just a month ahead of elections, mm. uh, a sharp decline, which suggests that to us, a lot of liquidity that's in the sector mm. is actually being kicked back into politics mm. uh, because they are called upon, builders are called upon to fund, fund elections. And this nexus between builders and politicians is well known because anything having to do with construction or building requires a license, a permit, and politicians right. and the bureaucrats they control can trade those favors in exchange for campaign cash, right? So there is a very good reason that India is one of the most poorly rated countries in the world when it comes to the ease of getting a construction permit, according to the World Bank's ease of doing business, which we like to tout right. uh, in India. And this is the reason political finance actually lies at the heart of it. Right. Interesting. I'm still trying to see if we can go across to Lalita Kumar Manglam. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yeah, better now. Okay. So Hello? the Okay. So the question is that, you know, quite apart from what is declared mm -hmm. by political parties, the allegation is that there are all these cases, whether it's in Goa, whether it's in Karnataka, where there have been accusations that the BJP has tried to buy the mandate, quote unquote. And the question arises, where does the money come from? Let's try and play the clip of some of those accusations that have been made in the past five years and then get you to react. BJP MLAs to हमारे सात एमएलएस से संपर्क किया गया है उन्हें 10-10 करोड़ रुपए का ऑफर दे रहे हैं क्या लोग नन्न पक्ष से शासक करके ने नूर कोटी हना कोट दिवे उन कैबिनेट ट्रैंक कोट दिवे इन तेली ये बात ऑफर कोट तक अंदर देने दे नूर कोटी व्हाइट मनी कोट दरो ब्लैक मनी कोट दरो कपड़ा कोट ताई दरो ये ली दे कपड़ा एक करोड़ रुपया मैं सौदो करी दी दो मन दस लाख रुपया वरुण भैया रोकड़ा आप या काले बीजा न्यू लाख आप कौन वही दो आप ऐसे एक करोड़ मो मरो सौदो करे हो एक करोड़ तो सुबह की रिजर्व बैंक मरा ऊपर करी दे जाए खाली करे तो आ नरेंद्र वायलाल भाई पटेल कदी खरी जवानों नथी नथी ने नथी so, Lalita Kumar Manglam, that was, uh, you know, that was a uh, ARP leader from Delhi claiming that the BJP was trying to buy MLAs. That was Kumar Swami in Karnataka. And the last was an associate of Hardik Patel. This okay. was during the Gujarat Assembly elections. Uh, Vasu, were you talking to me again? I just can't hear you at all. I'm yes. sorry. But from what I saw, what a little I saw on the on the screen let me try and uh, you know explain that now whatever i saw of the gentlemen who were on the screen they were making allegations that bjp was trying to indulge in, uh, in horse trading now i find it very hypocritical when political parties members act holier than thou horse trading if it has taken place hmm. every party has indulged in it i'm not uh, saying anybody has anybody hasn't hmm. because i'd much rather pay attention to the issue than to try and behave like, you know, we are all dood ka dhula and everybody else, especially the BJP is totally corrupt, which is what the Congress lady was trying to say. And we can, we can find innumerable instances where the Congress can also be hauled up and all other parties. Mm. The point is that if the system has to be cleaned up, then right. every political party has to be on board. And I find, I don't think that's going to happen. Right. So uh, I agree that there are often sources of funds which are undisclosed by all parties. Right. And the gentleman who spoke first, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name, sir, because it's so unclear on my, my talk back is. But he was right that in a, in a democracy, um, there is a, a lot of money power that goes into elections. Hmm. Parties that spend uh, often don't even declare how much they are spending and especially individuals. Hmm. Now, I've stood for elections. I know how this game goes on. And in India, I praise the Election Commission because this time they've at least made an effort. I agree with you, Vasu, when you say that a lot of money, despite that, has been spent in various parts of the country. Right. And by all parties, probably. Yes. But the fact is that it's the system that needs the cleanup, not individual parties, just well, individual parties. 
uh, individual it, I mean, parties. I have no idea. I don't know the answer to why the Congress has so much uh, less money than the BJP. But the Congress has made more than enough money when it was in power. <laughs> but again, that's their business. In fact, they lost well, power in 2014 on the corruption plank. One of right. the biggest well, plans you know, was corruption and the second, okay. of course, was also development. But, you know, this is but like I said, that's besides the point. The point I feel that's very important is will all political parties come together to actually handle this in a very upfront and honest manner? But you know, I Unless don't, I don't understand. Ourselves. I, I don't, don't understand think this when you say that. Is ever going to be solved. But you know, when I, but you know, these are these are all very sorry to say well-meaning generalities because at the end of the day, the system is made up of all of you. So if all of you individually start cleaning up your individual acts, it'll just make a huge difference. But as Trilochan Shastri will tell you, Trilochan. That every time you have gone or groups like you have gone to the courts, you've had to go to the courts actually to, to force political parties to become more transparent, they've fought back tooth and nail. Absolutely. Actually, the simple thing is an ordinary citizen of India does not need the law to be honest and transparent. But the political parties always claim that they need a law. Nothing prevents them from being honest and transparent. You don't need a law to back them up. It's very unfortunate that money still plays such a big role in elections. All of us on this panel seem to agree that money should not play. When we make the citizens of India aware that big, huge spending is anti-democratic, it is against building a great Indian nation or a great Bharat, mm. then we'll have true democracy. People should stop voting for those who are outspending others. That is the only way we'll get re real democracy. Like uh, Dr. Ambedkar said, we need not only political democracy, one person, one vote, mm. we need economic democracy and we are very far away from that. As long as money can buy votes in whichever way, we are still far away from democracy. Right. The other, yeah, and I, I want to come in. I, change uh, that. A huge education campaign is required. But you know, the other thing is that one thing is for parties to spend. Yeah, that's but all if I you wanted also to say. Look at, But if you also look at how much governments have been spending and if you look at how much that has gone up, Let's put that figure up on the screen. That is absolutely staggering. And I want all of you to come in on this. That in the past five years, this government has spent, if I'm not mistaken, upwards of 5,000 crores on publicity. This is all, you know, government data which has come. 5,200 crores, which is double what was spent by the previous government. So if you look at UPA 1 and 2, that itself came to 5,000 crores. Again, not a small amount by any means of public money, but that figure has now got doubled in the past five years. No, I have a couple of points. Uh, in um, that is that's what we we spent in advertisements in 10 years is what they they doubled it 5,000. Another but very you spent a lot as well. I no, mean, 2,500 crores a year. Of, but that's in 10 years. So this is five no, I'm years. saying 2,500 crores you spent per year. So 5,000 no, no, crores you we, spent in 10 years. They spent 5,000 crores in five, five years. Five years. So let me let me make a couple of points. One is the money they have got is from demonetization. That's not nobody talks about it. I mean, before demonetization, hmm. we know that lands were How properties we were sold. There are a lot of documents there where properties were sold. Black money was converted into white. Their own Sanjay Chaurasia and MLA from Diga has uh, admitted to that. So there were all those things. And then what happened to the 11 lakh crore which they uh, collected as excise duty from petrol which we have asked them for the white paper for that what mm. did you do with the money till now even in parliament they have not given a white paper out of it so what is happening is Bharatiya Janata Party remember who got in the RTI but you still have no, no, hold on, hold on. As, you, as you attack you still not answered my fundamental question which I asked yeah. you at the start of the show that 60% of your own finances are yeah. from undisclosed sources so, I mean, when I, you promise to cut down that ratio, I'm telling make you, it 20%. Rahul ji has put in our manifesto this time, we said we do not want electoral bonds. I mean, electoral bonds is the is a thing which you can, there is no declaration who gave, who is given the money, to right. whom is given the money. So we do not want it. That itself says that we want that's, transparency. That's one part of it. We want transparency. Okay, let me, okay, so you're saying you want transparency. We want transparency that's, that's because, and one more thing, one idea. last point, one last no, point, no, please, please. Kerala, Kerala, the money, money, I was traveling there, the money thrown for elections is much less because simply because people are educated votes cannot be bought and that's what okay. we need you know we need to educate our uh, okay. well I'm not sure if that's the only criteria but Milan, you had your hand where up. the money is not right. much Milan, okay. which I've, Milan, I've seen personally up. myself okay last comment so, so, so Vasu let's turn this from a complaint session to actually something productive let's stipulate that there are three things that we can do 
After demonetization, the government asked ordinary citizens to use digital payment for ordinary transactions. Why don't we stipulate that every rupee of political giving must be handled digitally and get rid of cash entirely to political parties? After our political parties are much more okay. set up. Point than one, quickly citizens. with the other Number point. One. Number Qu two, why don't we stipulate right now, as the Election Commission has uh, demanded for years and years and years, that yeah. political party books are audited not by their own hand-selected in-house auditor, right. but by a third-party auditor selected by... The okay, CIA and agent. point three million, sorry, I'm very over. Yeah, so, so you know, point three is, uh, we all talk about information transparency. Uh, the, the Central Information Commission has ruled political parties are subject to RTI. Okay. They won't even checks. meet with all the CIC in person. Checks. Okay, all three excellent suggestions. I wish I had the time to ask my two political representatives for their views, but we will come back to this no, uh, debate checks. and we will come back to this debate and we will come back uh -huh. uh, to the subject and get them to respond to all these three points. But thank you all so much for joining us. It's been fascinating. That's it on Reality Check. Thanks for watching. Good night.